Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock, which means it's time for a talk magic. And I am here with uh, an incredibly inspirational young man. This is somebody who shot to notoriety uh, and success by doing incredibly well in Britain's Got Talent and putting on some incredible performances. He was everywhere all through lockdown. Uh, he's just been at the London Magic Convention where at the age of 15, into the close-up competition and absolutely bossed it. He is a legend. He is incredible. He's only 15 years old and has achieved more at the age of 15 than most magicians do their entire career. I am, of course, talking about the legend himself, the one and only Mr. Jasper Cherry. How are you doing, man? Hello. I'm good, thank you, Greg. How are you? I'm, I'm excited. You know, I've interviewed some big names. I've interviewed Jay Sankey, Sean, not Jay Sankey, sorry, <laughs> Greg Wilson, Sean Farquhar. The list goes on and on. But my, I, I feel like I'd shut this whole thing down now. I've got Jasper Cherry on the channel. I mean, my life's complete. Like, I've been a big fan. I was watching. I remember not really knowing who you are and then seeing you come out on BGT on the auditions. And I was <laughs> like, wow, that was good. That was it. And you did a trick that I do, and you did it better than me, which was Silk Leg in your auditions. You were just, everything was great. So thank you so much for finding time in between school and magic and practicing and everything and gigs and everything else you do. Thank you for finding time to come on the channel. Yeah, no problem, Craig. It's, it's incredible to be here and um, to do another interview. It's, it's exciting. Awesome stuff. Well, Jasper, Everybody, a lot of people, especially over here in the UK, they know who you are. You're, you, you, you achieved quite a, a high level of fame very early on in your career. But I want to kind of rewind the clock a little bit, if you don't mind. And I want to do, yeah. uh, I want to find out a bit more about you. I want to find out a bit more about your origin story. I want to know how you got into magic, Jasper. So we'll talk about BGT and all that, that stuff later. Let's talk about you getting into magic how old were you how did that all come about okay so um when i first started magic i was nine years old so six years ago now which obviously for me is quite a long time um because i'm still so young and it was just as simple as um watching magicians on tv the likes of david blaine dynamo penn and teller um the usual, you know, kind of stuff that you find on TV. And it was the reactions. I mean, literally, I'm pretty sure most magicians say this, but it is the reactions that these magicians were getting and how just baffling everything was and just how all clever it was. And I just wanted some of that. So it was just a case of talking to some mates, looking online, and online was where, I just started watching YouTube videos. You know, I, I haven't had anyone sort of um, into magic at all, really. I mean, my family love magic, but they can't do it themselves. So that's just where I came from. Just online, I haven't had like a grandfather who's been into it or anything. Just, just me practicing in my bedroom. That's crazy because I'm sure you're aware of this, but there's a debate going on within magic at the moment about YouTube and how you shouldn't teach magic tricks to people on YouTube because it's yeah. exposing magic. And then other people say no, because you, you teach magic to people on YouTube and then they're going to want to get into magic and they're going to want to learn magic and it's going to be cool for yeah. them. It sounds to me that if YouTube wasn't a thing and if people weren't, putting tutorials out on YouTube, you wouldn't even be where you are right now. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, I 100% agree that um, magic has obviously got me to places, but it has been because of YouTube and this vast social media that I've been able to start learning. And then obviously, as you, when you practice anything, you just work your way up and then you do more and more things and more and more slides and then you can start putting all of these tricks together and then just learn all sorts really and that is where my magical uh talent i guess comes from that's brilliant and so you've never really had a mentor you never went to like a magic club or uh went to a magic society or 
it had a magician that kind of showed you the ropes. Everything has been sort of online based and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, through YouTube. And then obviously we've been at the magic conventions um, and just meeting other magicians. So then obviously you naturally get people wanting to help out. And also as obviously, you know, as a magic um, assistant and let's just say helping other magicians as well. So you'll know kind of what's that, what that's like. Um, mm. So yeah, it's, it's great. And like I, I said to you before, that people in the magic community are just so, so kind. And f- throughout basically every magician that I talk to, they want to almost give up their time and help all of these younger generations from the majority of magicians that I've talked to is that because we kind of know that magic it is slowly dying out sadly but we need to help all the other younger people come in to magic so that is what why I think people have been so nice like um I have some mates that are comedians and they said it's the complete opposite it's their joke and nobody else's joke so I think we're kind of lucky in that way that we do have people um, that are willing to share. Well, you know what? This is something I've talked about on the channel, Jasper. I've talked about how we need more young people coming into magic. And a lot of magic clubs are full of, well, people like me, basically, old people that, uh, you know, have been doing it for like 25 years. And you look around the room and you see you see a lot of old people, but you don't see many uh, young people getting into magic. As somebody who's been doing it since nine and now 15, what do you think the magic community needs to do to encourage more young people to get into magic so that it doesn't die out? Because you are right, you know, in many ways, in many ways, it's not. Like if you think of the final that you were on, on BGT, yeah. you know, you were in the, you were in the final, uh, Aiden was in the final, Magical Bones was in the fight. Like we had half of the acts were, were magicians and, yes. and none of them got put through by the judges. They were all put through by the public vote, which suggests to me that magic is really popular amongst, magi- uh, amongst lay people. And we need to yeah. nurture that and encourage it. So what can we do to get more people like you and Aidan and Izzy and, and, and people like that coming into, into magic? Yeah, I think there needs to be more... Um... I don't know, like, I guess you'd say, um, basically more social interaction. So I think more and more magicians going on, things like TikTok. I have seen um, magicians like Dan Rhodes. He's one of my mates. And I think what he's doing is fantastic because people are now able to see magic on the phones and they can scroll through hundreds of videos of magic tricks and I think that is what where where it needs to go and also on TV more because personally I don't think there's that much magic on TV and that's why it's so popular on BGT because I can't remember the last time I really saw a magic series on TV like I think it was it was quite a while ago that there's just been a solo magic series on TV. Obviously, you've got Penn and Teller, but I think that's slightly different because it's more magician y in a way and less about the audience watching it, I think. But um, I think there needs to be more just magic about in general. So, like things like on TV, on YouTube, on social media, um, and also teacher magic as well, because that is just as important to, for people to be able to learn. Hmm. I completely agree. I completely agree with you 100%. I want to talk about that a little bit more. Before I do, let's just circle back very briefly. So you got into magic at the age of nine. Yes. When did you, and and obviously the bug bit and you did YouTube and all of that stuff. I'm guessing you then found magic shops and you started buying something from, uh, you know, from online shops and, and so on and so forth. I also know that you do gigs and you gig very regularly despite being at school. When did you start gigging, Jasper? How old were you when you when you started doing the, the gigs? Uh, good question. I'd say that was... May, uh, I'd be about 12, I'd say. Like, properly starting out doing weddings. So my first gig was at my um, 
my dad's best mate's daughter. Uh, she had a wedding. So I did about half an hour's magic there. And that was my first sort of insight into what it's like. And um, looking back now, I probably, probably wasn't as best prepared as I should have been. Um, but obviously these things that you learn. Um, so, and then it just slowly kind of went from there and then doing bits every now and then. Uh, and then obviously BGT came along and it's been uh, quite busy since then. I think Zoom also has helped because I've been doing lots and lots of stuff on Zoom um, throughout lockdown. So it it just made it, it made it for me so much easier because you can do magic to schools because I live in the north of England. So I could do like magic to I don't know schools for example or parties. Um, down south or close to me or anywhere just because I'm still sat where I am and you don't have all of that travel time which was a lot easier um, and it meant that I feel more people could get to see what I could do because you could fit maybe two or three in a day as opposed to just the one because you have to travel there travel back that can take two or three days um, in preparation so I think that was that was good uh, on the on the gigging kind of turns. And a lot of the stuff that I've seen you do is on stage. I mean, obviously on BGC, which we'll get to in a bit, you were on stage, you were doing stage performances. A lot of the stuff that you've been doing on Zoom has been stage-based. Even when you entered the close-up competition, let's be honest, that room wasn't a close-up gig. That room no. was, you know, I mean, that you might have been doing close-up, but that was a stage gig really at the end of the day um did you when, when i suppose my question is most people when they first get into magic it's to do close-up it's to learn close-up and card tricks and stuff like that did you always have a desire to move towards stage magic or is that something that just happened over time and do you still um, do now? i'd say i still do close-up as much as stage i say most most of my stuff is actually cards so it's just about making that bigger, I feel, that stage magic can be any kind of magic, but bigger, because obviously they need to see it, um, unless you have some kind of camera like we had um, at the close-up competition. So I think that um, it's just, it was a natural thing that you kind of build up. So, I mean, b before I even did magic, I was um, a local drama school, so well, not a drama school, but a drama like club that I go to every Thursday after school. So I'd always been like around stages, I guess, my throughout my childhood. So for that, that obviously helped. So I'd always be doing card tricks, and then I'd show some of my mates, show some of my dad's mates parties, and then um, I entered a talent competition. Um, in Burnley, Burnley's got talent um, and that was when I had my first sort of stage experience because I got to do magic on stage as well as just being I guess an actor on stage. Um, magic and acting kind of can cross over if you think about it uh, like that. So I'd say that's where it kind of began and you do slowly but build it up. So I definitely started off as a close-up magician for sure. And I definitely still do close-up magic. And do you have any advice for dealing with nerves? Because man, you've gone into some nerve wracking situations. I mean, <laughs> I can't imagine how difficult it is walking out on a BGT stage in front of, you know, the judges and the audience and, 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 you know, live cameras and the audience at home. And then, you know, walking out at the London magic convention in front of people like Andy Nyman and Peter yes. Nardi and like the who's who, and you're there at 15 years old going, right. Okay. Let me show you what I'm going to do. Yeah. Man, I mean, there's some magicians that would go through their entire career and not put themselves into that situation. And at 15 years old, you're just... And I was speaking to you beforehand, before you went and did the close-up competition. You and I were uh, showing each other the tricks. And I was yeah. like, are you nervous? And you're like, nah. <laughs> I'm like, <Nah>. wow. <laughs> this is amazing. So, I mean, how come you're cool as a cucumber? And have you got any advice on that? Um, 
Well, I think it helps that my natural, um, one of my traits is that I am very, very laid back. Um, some say a little too laid back, but um, I'm very calm about things. I do. I definitely get nervous um, before shows, but they say that if you're nervous, that shows you care. So um, nerves are a good thing in my point of view. They don't. They don't feel good. So that's for sure. But um, yeah, I, I think it's it's a tricky one, and you don't really know until you've been in situations. So I think you just have to deal with it as it comes. But the, all all I say is practice as much as you can, and that is that that that's what I do. I just practice and make sure. And then when you're backstage as well make sure you got everything ready because that is the most important thing. You don't want to get through halfway through your act and then realise my deck of cards isn't set up correctly or, you know, or, or you forget how to do one thing. Make sure it's all set up correctly and you're going through it all the time. That You've got almost like list it off, everything that you've got. And then I feel that calms down a lot more and you feel like you're ready a lot more for the... Uh, situation but going back to BGT again like you mentioned that was at the auditions so the first one that was my most nerve-wracking moment ever for sure because I feel like you have to prove yourself a lot more because you're seeing the judges for the first time and you're performing in front of two three thousand people um and I'd only done maximum like 100 people before so it was it, it was quite a big step up for sure um, but you just have to get on with it, I think. Well, let's talk about BGT for a minute, and then we can circle back onto some of the other stuff. Let's talk about BGT. So what made you decide to enter BGT? What made you sitting there, you've started gigging at the age of 12 or 13 years old, and then you kind of say at one point, you know, you, you, you've never had a mentor, you've never had a, you're completely self-taught. Um, and then you go, right, you know what? I'm going to enter the world's largest talent competition uh, 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 I'm, I'm, and you were what 14 then 13 or something yeah. or wow where did that come from like what 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 made you decide to actually go and do that um it was I think one of well at that time that was the thing that I wanted to do because from I don't know since whenever I can remember I'd always watch BGT we watch it every year and then also seeing all of the magicians as well, and especially Izzy Simpson, because she was the first ever child magician, really, um, that I ever saw, and also first on BGT. So that was definitely something that I just saw that and thought, I want to I wanna give it a go. So um, that was um, two years in the making, because I was actually meant to do it the year before. So... That was uh, quite quite the journey, and then basically we went all through the trick, and because of legal reasons, and it got complicated. And then the day before, I was meant to go down to London to perform. They had to cancel and said, "Can you please come back next year?" So that was um, that was a big hit for 2019, and then we just decided to completely change the trick, and go again, and crack it. <laughs> little uh, egg joke there. I like that, yeah. And it was a very <laughs> interesting choice going and doing Silk to Egg. I mean, that's a, that's a, a kind of a classic of magic. It's not, yeah. you know, yeah. some people go and do their audition and it's like all singing, all dancing, um, you know, just like super clever. You, you, you just, I, I had a lot of respect for you watching that because you're like, well, here's this kid that I've never seen before and he's coming out and he's doing a classic of magic and he's absolutely bossing it. I mean, that's, it was it was an interesting decision going for something like that, right? Definitely, definitely. I feel like because it's a classic, lots of magicians know it, and I think they kind of understand the importance of it. Um, also, um, we did see Lance Burton at the Blackpool Magic Convention as well, so I didn't really get to talk to him about it, but it was good seeing him and seeing him perform it, um, which is really good and. Uh, I can't remember uh, how one of the judges described it, but they described it as something like um, almost modern, which I thought was funny because I guess to a normal lay audience, they haven't seen anything like that before. Um, 
unless you know they they're into that classical magic. So I, I think that was good. And also Silk to Egg, it's like you say, it's quite it's it's a simple trick if if you look at when you're watching it, it's you see an egg and a handkerchief. There's 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 not much to it, there's not much to process. And I think that easy magic or simple looking magic is really good for audiences because they can clearly see what's happening and yes you're doing that but actually you're 15 steps ahead and that's actually not what you're doing so um yeah i think it's respected for magicians <coughs> it's respected for magicians but also i feel like audiences might not have seen it before so it's an interesting choice for sure and i'm really happy with it how it came out Oh, it was great. Now, did you have, I mean, obviously off the back of that, you you made it through to the live rounds. Did you have your semi-final piece already in mind? Or were you just kind of thinking, you know what, I'm going to go out and do this. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, like, what, what Did you have it in mind or not? Uh, not at all, because um, we didn't even know that I was going to be in the semi-finals until about 10 days before my act. So that was quite a stressful 10 days. Um, but the thing is, you don't want to get your hopes up and thinking, yeah, I'm going to make it to the semifinals and even the finals, because then the letdown will be even more, um, I guess, depressing and sad if you're not in. So it was kind of like, just sort of take it as you're not in, but if they do call you, then that's a bonus kind of thing. Um, so that was quite stressful then 10 days. And I can't remember how many times we changed the trick. It was, there was so much of like, we were going to do something completely different. And then I think the Statue of Liberty entered there at some point. And then it was, I'm going to disappear. And, and there was all, I think it was going to be a much more, stage involved not staged but like stage involved sort of like disappearing under the stage and kind of thing um but then we just decided to completely change it and mash up some kind of different tricks with um the phone trick being quite modern and technological and new um so we kind of put sort of two three four things together and then that is how my semi-final was formed so Definitely no kind of plan set out of what we wanted it to be. It was just sort of seeing what worked and putting loads of different things together and then just practicing that until uh, the semis. Well, obviously, off the back of being at the semis, they then got through to the finals. And, yeah. and, and, and I'd, I'd be interested, A, to know if you had the final prepared, but B, also... I also found it very interesting that you went back to a classic of magic, you know, the uh, hospitality style routine. It was, it was a modern version of a classic and I absolutely loved it. And, and frankly, it fooled the hell out of me and I still don't know now how it's done. I mean, it was incredible, but obviously it's a, it's a classic of magic that Paul Daniels was doing many, many years ago. Um, what was the, yeah, so A, did you have the final prepared and B, what made you go back to another classic of magic after kind of going down the semi-final route of kind of going more modern and high tech? You're then bringing it back again and kind of going back to classics. Yeah, um, I think, um, no, no, it was not planned. The finals was not planned out because again, I think there was about eight days, maybe nine um, before, semi-finals down to London so that was again not planned um, and I think one reason for this is that my goals when I first set out on the BGT journey was just to perform in front of all of those people at the auditions and maybe make it on the TV that was that was what the plan was but then to obviously make it to the semi-finals and then the finals that was just in, incredible incredible so no, it wasn't a plan. And then uh, B, I guess, as you called it, was that um, I think we also saw Lance Burton perform that trick. 
he did a he did a version of that. So I think that was a nice link be- between the auditions and the finals. And um, it was with the finals. I feel like it was a bit more of a a bigger trick. It was a bit more of a a stage kind of trick, and that is what I enjoyed because it was different. Um, it wasn't it wasn't my style. I wouldn't say like. I, I really love performing the trick and it is a great trick. It's great fun, but I wouldn't say it's, um, I don't know, something that I perform regularly, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It absolutely does. And I found it interesting that, you know, earlier on in this interview, you described yourself as a bit of a card guy and that you love doing card magic and card yeah. magic is your thing. And yet a lot of the material that you were doing through your BGT journey wasn't card magic at all like um is is that because you thought that cards were a bit too done to death on on the show or was it because like what what's the reason if cards are your like your thing and you didn't go down the route of doing cards was there a reason for that um i mean i think it's more of the typical magician thing to do a card trick so um in my audition, I think I kind of mentioned that Simon must absolutely hate card tricks, so I'm not going to do that kind of thing. So um, I think that was my opening line, actually, if I can remember back correctly. But um, it was it was definitely a choice that we had to make, and um, I still I still perform silk twig out and about, and that is that is a great trick because you can just carry it on you and it works as close up. It works as stage. Um, so I, I, I was happy with that choice, and obviously the other two as well. But um, yeah, it was it was just being different. I guess that was the reason to stand out. That 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 was the main the main. Reason. That's incredible. And here's a question for you. Obviously, um, you're at school still. Um, how was it being at school? And being on national primetime television at the same time, like, you know, you're there, people are, you know, people like Simon Cowell are talking about how amazing you are. And oh my gosh, you're the most amazing person in the world. And you're, you're on TV and you're, you're basically a bit of a superstar. And then you kind of going back into school and seeing your mates. How was that experience? Um, well, obviously it was, it was filmed before. So it was filmed um, in the February of 2020 and it was aired in like April May time so by the time it was aired we was in lockdown so that was slightly different so I didn't have the first experience at school but I definitely still had everyone in the world messaging me saying you know how proud they were and um just what a great job I did so I'm I, I still definitely felt that and very very thankful for everyone and all those messages that I obviously received. And then still afterwards, when we were back in school, um, basically a year later, nearly, and still everyone just basically wanted to say hi or or whatever. It was, it was, it was crazy. And I think we didn't realize how many people were gonna see it and how noticed that you get to the school. Like even today, I, I still go around school and I hear people in the background sort of that's Jasper or like you know like sign, like chattering away or um or sometimes they even just ask me can you show me a trick so I, I always have to carry a deck of cards around with me now um mm-hmm. just in case someone asks which is quite fun so that's that's good um so yeah I think the the response was quite was quite insane and there is definitely uh, it's very weird keeping such a big secret as well because we, we didn't really tell anyone. We basically, t- my family obviously knew and maybe one or two of my mates, but that was, that was it. So it, it was very weird keeping such a big, big secret um, from overall. I can imagine. I can imagine. That's awesome. And then off to the back of BGT, um, you've done a few TV appearances, which is amazing. And obviously you've done a lot of gigs, which is amazing. Yeah. What made you, I have to ask you, what made you decide to enter the 
close-up competition because there's a world of difference between going out on a BGT stage and then going into a really big competition and performing in front of magicians and 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 holding yourself to the same level as you know those are, there were a lot of really good magicians in that competition and mm -hmm. you know as I said at the very beginning and I stand by I thought you were incredible and I had you down to win. Um, what 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 made you decide to go and do that? Um, well, it's it was just something completely different. I'd never done anything like that before. I'd done um, a few talent competitions before, but never just a magic competition in front of magicians. Mm. So that was definitely a new challenge. And it was coming up with not only a trick that was a good trick, but also something that could potentially fool magicians there um, and also being a bit different. So that is why I based it off of the semi-final uh, performance. So we had like the elements of the foam and um, with the paths as well. So I think that was something because it is a bit more modern, um, which which I do I do enjoy. So that was basically the main reason. And it is different because you have to work not only to the audience but to the cameras as well. And um, I guess just how you talk and act around all of these magicians, which is which is insane. So I still felt the pressure, obviously, because it's the biggest names in magic that you are performing in front of. So, but I think it was it was exciting and it was a new challenge for me. That's great. That's fantastic. A um, couple of other questions. Um, one, I was speaking to your mom earlier, and she is so unbelievably proud of you. I mean, she just <laughs> like worships you, and rightfully so because you are brilliant. Is it, is it difficult? getting into magic and not having somebody around you that you can talk to about magic. The reason I'm bringing this up is my son Ryland is into magic as well. And yeah. he's got me that he can speak to, which is cool. But outside of that, he finds it frustrating when he goes to school, he can't talk to anyone. He's like, he can't go to his mates and go, Hey, check out my new double lift. What do you think of this handling on this routine? And, and he's too young to go to magic clubs and he's got no other friends around him that are magicians. And he finds it very, difficult and he's nine so he's not even on social media like did, did you find that as well and has that been an issue for you or is that something that wasn't too much of a problem um I think it's it's a it was a weird one because now my mum is as much of a magician as I am but she can't do the tricks so she she knows how everything works basically so it's quite um it's quite difficult for me now to fool my mum but I think that's a good thing because then when I'm practicing anything, my mum can say, oh, I saw that, or maybe try that at a different angle, or what if you did this? Um, so that's good. But I definitely think it was a learning process for me and my mum. So it was going along and I showed my mum this and then basically telling her how I do it. And then she can then watch for that and see if she notices. So that is how we kind of got around that thing of I don't know her helping me in a way um, and also another thing that is what I found is one recording yourself which is extremely cringy to watch back <laughs> but if you can bear that then it is very useful because you can see everything in the moment another thing is just practicing the mirror as well because you try to catch yourself out and it's also good for practice because you're not actually looking at the deck so you can you kind of I don't know you feel it a bit more if that makes sense it does it does and one thing I've noticed every time I've watched you perform you are very slick every move that you do is just really well executed so um yeah I mean what let me ask you one more question Jasper What's your goals? What's your goals and aspirations? Because let's be honest, and, and, and I'm going to make no bones about this. There's magicians that are going to be watching this that will never have achieved what you've achieved at the age of 15. And you've already achieved it. Like, but I can tell from speaking to you and from watching you that you're a very driven, ambitious young man. So what are the, what are the goals? What are your magical bucket list? What would you like to achieve? Are you wanting to leave school and become a professional? Are there certain things that you want to achieve in terms of performing? Like what, what, are, you, what are you wanting in an ideal situation where are you wanting this magical journey to go? 
Um, well, first of all, just going on the topic of leaving school. So when I leave school, I'll, I'll probably go to college, but then keep up the magic and do magic as much as possible and practice in my free time. Um, but then I suppose after that or still during that, I want to kind of um, go out a bit more and perform for more people, uh, travel the world and perform as well. That that would be good too because we basically go to Spain on holiday, um, but I don't, I haven't been around a lot, if that makes sense. So I love to perform in, obviously, Las Vegas is the big one. Um, I'd love to perform there, Abu Dhabi, um, stuff like that. I think that would be good travelling and performing to the people. Um, I guess as well, I'd like to have stuff on film. So obviously then you can look back at that, but also to share with other people. So, for instance, a TV show or, um, I don't know, more stuff on social media like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's something that I want to do. Basically just perform for more people, um, become a professional magician and do TV shows, I guess. That's fantastic. What, a, what, a, what an amazing goal. And would you eventually want to create your own magic? Is that something you're interested in or is it more about performing for you? That is actually um, a good point. I think that magic is, you can basically do anything with magic. Like if you can somehow figure out a way, then it's, it's yours. So I think creating a magic trick would be incredible. That is That is something that, I definitely could look into a bit more because obviously right now I'm a bit more, I guess, skilled at performing, but creating magic tricks, I think is a good way of not only business, because obviously depending on how good it is, you can market it more expensive and less expensive, but also it's just creating something new and something different. Um, So whether it be a gimmick or just, I don't know, sharing something or your, views or how you you're handling on a certain thing i think that would be that'd be cool amazing and on top of all of that are you going to be at blackpool this year coming up yes i am 100 percent, definitely me and my mum gonna be there walking around chatting to everyone as possible, or as many people as possible that's great uh, look when i was at blackpool last a couple of years ago um I saw Izzy Simpson and she had like a, an entourage of like uh, uh, younger magicians just following her. Like, is there some sort of secret underground like kid magician club that I don't know about? Like, that, that just like every time I looked around in the dealer hall or somewhere, there was Izzy and there were like an entourage of like other younger magicians. Were you in, were you, were you there in that group? And, and, and is there some sort of, uh, you know, like underground Blackpool magician club for kids or something. Um, not that I'm aware of that there is a, <laughs> some kind of secret kids initiative Blackpool thing. <laughs> I don't know, but um, I think it helps that we're all like a similar age. We're all kind of vary between ten and fifteen, so there's not m- that much of an age gap. Whereas Obviously, I don't know, me to other magicians, there might be more with more experience. So it's, um, I think that definitely the connection's there. And also, I, I yes, last year uh, we was with Izzy quite a lot. Uh, so it was me, Izzy, Aiden, Killian, who was also there. Um, I know he was there. So definitely, uh, Ryland should definitely join in as well because it's, it's, it's good fun just sitting around um, and chatting and like, because it's mainly all of our mums as well who's there. So that's good because we kind of all still get to go out. And I remember last time we went to Pizza Express and just had food and they can all come and chat as well as we can chat and share magic and stuff. So that's um, that's definitely something I that never, happens. And I'm I looking forward thought, to meeting. I, I never thought of that, but you are right. Magic mums. The mums of of of, of uh, younger magicians, 
you know, they, they, yeah. they, 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 you know, I know they, they must have sacrificed an awful lot, you know, and they probably know more about magic than most people in that convention. It's interesting <laughs> to think about that, actually. There's a meeting of magic mums somewhere. So funny. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, and definitely I can say for my mum, I mean, she's, she's gone to football practice right now with my sister, but um, she put so much time into everything and, um, basically it's now got to the point where I just show up and do the gig kind of thing because she manages to get me there. Um, I obviously prepare on the magic side, but she always like talks to the people who are booking me or um, like, like with you, Craig, you know, she has your number and she's sort of sorting out all the times and stuff. So um, that's definitely something that I owe to my mum, all of the... Yeah, I can tell how proud she is of you. Preparation. Fantastic. And one other question before we wrap all this up. Would you, uh, you know, you did so well in that, uh, you've talked about entering lots of talent competitions and you did so well in BGT. You did so well in the close-up competition. You've mentioned wanting to become a professional and travel all over the world. Would you like to enter more competitions, both competitions like, uh, you know, for, for, for lay people, but also competitions for magicians? Is that something that you'd like to do more of moving forward? Yeah, I think definitely um, performing in competitions is fun because you kind of get to see how well you're doing at that time and you get to also almost have the pressure of practicing because it has to be perfect because you're up against other people. Um, so that definitely pushes you to practice more and more. Um, and yeah, I, I do find that when you're performing for not just um, lay people, but especially for magic competitions that you find you, you, you create new things and you, you have to try and figure out a different way of doing the trick because there are magicians are watching and you want to try to fool them as much as possible or kind of show them what you can do as much as possible, um, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I think um, that would be fun. And also doing stuff at magic conventions, like I'd love to, I don't know, well, I mean, just when we're going around talking to the magicians, that is one of the best things about Blackpool because there are so many magicians there and you get to meet up with so many people and, you make new friends um it's just it's amazing so i mean even if it was performing at blackpool you know in the in one of the shows that would be that would be amazing that'd be cool right that'd be brilliant fantastic that's awesome now i have to ask you do you and i, I you know i don't want to put you on the spot but you know to round this whole interview off have you got a trick you could show me i do i do um I think we'll go for we'll go for something that's kind of a, a similar trick to what we did at the London Magic Convention, just a, a shortened down version because obviously that was nearly on ten minutes long. So uh, what we'll do here is Craig deck of cards. Okay, Craig, you just say stop. Stop. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Take a look at that card for me. Got it. Okay. We'll uh, we'll set that just into the deck. Now, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try to read your mind, Craig. Okay. So all I'd like you to do is I'd just like you to keep thinking about that card over and over and over again. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Here we go. Get in that it's it's a red card, right? Yeah. Uh, Diamond. Yes. Quite quite low. Yes. I think I know what the card is, and it's actually on top of the deck. Your card, the three of diamonds. No, that's not my card. Well, the three of diamonds isn't your card. No. Uh okay, uh what was your card then? Two of diamonds. Oh the two of diamonds, not not the three. No. Okay, well, okay, well, what if we did this? <laughs> what if we <laughs> remove one of the diamonds so it's just the two diamonds? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I can see 
it, you find it funny, but it's not, it's, it's still not a two. No. So here we go. One, two, three. Nice. Two. That should be um, your card. Yes. Yes, that's my card. Now we're going to do one final thing with the two. Okay, here we go. Completely Ow. blank. Now, um, Craig, you know what the really strange thing is? I have um, this display of cards behind me, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, there's one thing on top, and this is these three decks of cards. And if I open the card case up, there is actually one card on the front. And your card is the, uh, remind me again? Two of diamonds. Two of diamonds. Your card right there. Disappeared, jumped to the card case. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Really good stuff. Really commercial. Really slick. Well handled. Very good. That was great. Thank that was great. You. Thank you. It's been so much fun. Um, and good to, I guess, perform to another magician again. You know what? You are incredible. And genuinely, I've got a reputation around here for saying what I think. And I think that the, uh, you know, the, the, the magic community is in safe hands with people like you coming up and leading from the front. I think that magic is going to be pretty good for the next few years. I don't think we're going to have to worry about it. You're an inspiration. You are incredible. What you have achieved at a young age is just awesome. And uh, I wish you nothing but success. Not that you need it, because I think um, knowing how ambitious you are and how talented you are, I think you're going to be going places, Jasper. I think, Mr. Cherry, you are going to be a very big name in this community for many, many, many years to come. And my, uh, my virtual hat is off to you, my friend. Thank you so much, Craig. It's been, it's been so much fun. Good to chat to another magician again and um, obviously answer all your questions and share some uh, more of my thoughts. You're, you're brilliant, mate. Now, what I want everyone to do who watches this, go leave a comment down below for Jasper. Um, uh, I'm sure he'll see them. He's on social media. So go check out uh, the comment section below. And also, Jasper, I want to put on the screen your socials. Where can people follow you? Uh, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, what they're looking for. Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, um, basically everything. So uh, it's just Jasper Cherry Magician. Um, and that's it. Obviously, it'll be up on the screen now. So uh, that's all. Give us a follow to check out some more magic and uh, what I'm up to. Brilliant stuff. Guys, follow Jasper on all of the platforms. Make sure you leave a comment down below. I will be back again tomorrow with another three videos. Jasper, one more time. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Craig. See you guys. Mm.